Hi, this is on computational shortcuts for information, theoretic PIR, and this is joint work with Rivadi Shai, Dick Kolorov, and Russell Lai. Homomorphic secret sharing is an information theoretic analog of homomorphic encryption, and it has many use cases, including delegating computation and low communication MPC. The very basic setting of HSS consists of a single client and case servers, where the client holds a secret input to a function f. But perhaps the function is too complicated for the client to compute on its own, it decides to apply a secret sharing that splits it into k parts and have the servers compute it instead. Each of the servers turn the input shares into an output share um, by applying a local evaluation mapping that takes in a representation of the function being computed. At the end, they send all of these output shares back to the client and the client can apply a decoding procedure to recover the actual value. It is important to note that for homomorphic secret sharing for function families, we actually mean for the representation of the function because it is the actual, it is the representation that's actually used in the scheme. Several important metrics of the scheme that we care are the input share size alpha, the local evaluation time tau, and the output share size beta. And for the scheme to be useful, it has to be correct. That means at the end, the client recovers the correct value with high probability. And by T privacy, we mean that any set of T shares among the K shares should information theoretically has the original secret. More formally, this means that the distribution of the set is the same regardless of the actual value of the secret. And as in the case of computational homomorphic encryption, we require the upper share to be compact. That means the size of the upper share should be small. And this is needed to avoid trivial constructions where the server simply append a representation of f to the share and postpone all the computation to the decoding step. In our talk, let's focus on perfectly correct and one private protocol. And we also require the protocol to have additive reconstruction where the decoding is a simple addition. And this is an extreme form of compactness. This is useful because, for instance, suppose we have an HSS for function f and for g. We can obtain an HSS for function f plus g by simply telling the server to locally add up their upper shares, respectively. Compared to the success in computational world where we have fully homomorphic encryption, there are very few known IDHSS in the literature. First, we have HSS for linear functions which follow from any linear secret sharing scheme. And we also have HSS for functions represented by low degree polynomials, and this follow from multiplicative property of secret sharing schemes such as Shamir or CNF sharing. And the number of servers in such a scheme have to scale linearly in the degree. And this is not what we wanted because what we want to know what can be done for a constant number of servers. By the way, this means the size of the representation of the function as, and is usually correlated with the computational complexity of f in our setting. And HSS for general truth tables are known as private information retrieval. PRR is the setting where a client holds an input to a truth table and it wishes to retrieve a single bit. Here, let's use capital N to denote the size of the truth table, which is to the little n. And there are roughly three generations of PRR protocols. The first generation encodes the truth table in a manner similar to read ruler code, and it achieves a share size of n to the 1 over k for k servers. And the second generation is based on recursion, and it's slightly better, but the input share size is still exponential for a constant number of servers. The third generation protocols are based on matching vectors, and it hugely improved this situation, and the share size is now sub-exponential for the minimal number of three or two servers, depending on whether you want the upper share size to be short. Now let's compare HSS with fully homomorphic encryption to see why it's an interesting primitive in addition to being unconditionally secure. HSS has its main drawback in that it requires many shares and the servers to be non-colluding. And even worse, for slightly more complicated functions, the share size is already super polynomial compared to the computational world where we have FHE and the, share, and the cybertech size is polynomial in the security parameter and the input size. But HSS has many attractive features where 
uh, which FHA does not have. As we'll see in the next slide, concretely, HSS has lightweight configuration and communication, and this is due to the fact that no com complex crypto operations are involved and there is no overhead in the security parameter. It also allows efficient and public decoding, where the decoding is often just a single addition over the upper share, which allows easy extension to settings where there are multiple clients and so on. The concrete communication complexity of HSS for point functions are given in the following table. The communication complexity are worse asymptotically as they are exponential, but concretely for small domains, they are competitive with their computational counterparts, such as FSS function secret sharing, which in turn build from one-way function. And in fact, they are competitive for record size up to millions and billions. Therefore, it is worthwhile to see if we can further improve the efficiency of PR schemes. For all known PR schemes, the evaluation time is linear in the size of the truth table. And the state of the art show us a matching vector protocol implies a three party HSS with share size sub exponential for any function represented by the truth table. And such schemes are already interesting because the share size is independent of the computational complexity of the function. And this overcomes the so-called circuit size barrier in the information theoretic crypto. However, the local evaluation time is exponential, regardless of the actual function being evaluated. And it is natural to ask, can we make PRL evaluate faster given a structured F? It can be shown that for an unstructured F, exponential time is necessary. And this motivates the notion of PRL shortcuts which means alternative ways to carry out the same input to output mapping in the evaluation local mapping, and, but in a time that's substantially better than the naive evaluation exponential time. And if we can obtain PR shortcuts, then this will automatically give you non-trivial HSS for the corresponding families. Now let's take a look at our results. The first generation read model PIR where the share size is n to the 1 over k. We construct shortcuts for simple functions where the number of ones in the truth tables are easy to count. Such functions include, for example, truth tables where the number of ones form a total of uh, L continuous segments. This implies HSS with better efficiency for those functions. And by the way, there's not much help to construct HSS for those functions with better efficiency without actually giving better PRR if we want to improve the share size. When we move to slightly more complicated functions where the number of ones are hard to count in the truth tables, we can encounter fine grained complexity hardness. In particular, any shortcut would imply a better counting algorithm for CNF formula, which would falsify the exponential time hypothesis and its strong barrier, the SCTH which has standard assumptions in fine grained complexity. The scenarios are perhaps surprisingly very different when we consider matching vector protocols. We can show that if for even the O1 functions, this computation cannot be sped up to some exponential time unless the ETH fails. Therefore, we can see that the, the hardness arises from the structure of the matching vector protocol, and in particular from the structure of the combinatorial object matching vector family and not from the function being evaluated as we had in the first case. And this it builds on the hardness of graph counting problems. Finally, we present possible ways to circumvent the hardness of matching vector protocols. However, these circumventions do not actually give shortcuts because we are rebuilding the protocols and it comes at a significant cost, such as increasing the number of servers. Let's take a closer look at the positive results. Here we shall use the three server remote protocol with square root of n communication size as an example. The first family for which we have shortcuts are functions whose truth table consists of a bounded union of continuous segments at once. And for such functions, we obtain the so called strong shortcuts because these are virtually the best to hope for. It's linear in the input chair size and also linear in the representation size. And here's an example of a union of three segments. 
Such segment functions are useful because they can encode multiple comparison relations at once. And its generalization to higher dimension are straightforward. And here is an example of a union of four 2D intervals in a square. To understand how the shortcut works, let's look at how the evaluation maps are defined in the free server remote PIR. The server treats the true table as a true 2D square and is given two vector variables, each of length square root n. And it has to compute the following degree to polynomial where each monomial corresponds to the entry at row i1 and column i2. And here, each monomial is multiplied by an extra coefficient that, that is the value of the function on that point. And at the end, here is to sum over every entry, giving a, an evaluation time of capital N. So for what functions can we speed up this computation? It is natural to consider the combinatorial rectangles because they are regular in such shapes. And in fact, we can factor out the polynomial if they are combinatorial rectangles. And if we compute according to this second expression by sum then multiply, this takes a square root of n time, which is a huge improvement over the original capital N time. And we can generalize this to a union of disjoint combinatorial rectangles because the HSS is additive and as the rectangles are disjoint, they won't interfere with each other when we add them together. Perhaps surprisingly, this is the basic observation that gives rise to all of our shortcuts for read model PIR. 2D intervals are apparently combinatorial rectangles, therefore there are shortcuts that run in square root of n times L. A further observation is that uh, we can actually improve this computation, changing this multiplication sign to additive sign because now the summation has continuous ranges and we can first take the prefix sums over the vector variables and then answer each of these summations in constant time. And if we consider one-dimensional intervals, they are first mapped to two-dimensional intervals in the square. And you can see that each one-dimensional interval is mapped to at most three to the intervals. Therefore, a strong shortcut for intervals automatically gives us a strong shortcut for segments. And if we generalize this approach to more servers, our shortcuts only work for high dimensional intervals only when the dimension divides the number of servers minus one. And it is an interesting, but perhaps taxing open problem to understand can we get shortcut for any dimension for a constant number of servers. The second family of functions are more of a computational flavor. We show that for any decision tree over n variables with L leaves, we have shortcuts. And the shortcuts that we obtain, despite being much better than the naive ones, are not as strong as in the previous case, so we call these shortcuts weak. A decision tree is a computational model which has a tree structure, and each internal node tells you to go either left or right depending on the value of the input variable and at the end, it outputs either one or zero. And every decision tree can be converted into a disjoint DNA formula, where each of the terms has disjoint support, meaning that any two terms cannot be simultaneously satisfied by a single assignment to the variable. And our shortcuts work for any such formula easily follows from combinatorial rectangles since each conjunctive term maps to a combinatorial rectangle in the truth table and the position of ones are disjoint by the assumption that the DMF terms are disjoint. Therefore, we have a shortcut that runs in square root of n times L. And by further observing the structure of these summation ranges, which are specified by DNF term, we can improve the complexity to either this or that, where in the first improvement, we can improve the multiplicative constant by cubic root, and in the second improvement, we can do more preprocessing and improve the constant to one. But in either case, these are not uh, strong shortcuts. So an interesting open problem is how do we retrieve this summation uh, specified by conjunctive term faster? And this has a data structure algorithm flavor. In the paper, we also consider geometric families such as convex shapes and approximation of disk and these fine applications in such as deciding privately whether a client is within reach from a list of locations. And for a brief summary of our positive results, 
We have shown the existence of shortcuts for several simple but useful functional families. And the next natural question is what about other functions? What specifically are the functions that emit shortcuts in regular PIR? This remains an intriguing open problem and we are able to partially answer this problem. In the case of regular schemes, one cannot hope to get shortcuts for functions whose number of satisfying assignments are difficult to count. This is because any shortcut supporting the function implies uh, counting the number of satisfying assignments to the truth table in roughly the same time complexity. Therefore, as a corollary of the exponential time hypothesis and its strong variant, counting the number of satisfying assignments to a CNF formula or a general DNF formula is difficult to be done in sub-exponential time. And so we obtain the following corollaries. Assuming the exponential time hypothesis for large number of servers, there is no strong shortcut for non-disjoint general DNF formulas. And if the strong variant of exponential time hypothesis is true, then for any number of servers, no weak shortcut exists at all for, for such DNF formulas. Note that this does not contradict with our positive result for disjoint DNF formula, because indeed for disjoint DNF formulas, the number of satisfying assignments are easy to count. Now we have a rough understanding of the landscape of shortcuts in the regular schemes. Let's move on the state of the art MV schemes. Our negative results for metric vector schemes can be summarized as follows. Performing the required computation for either the O1 function in the scheme is impossible in sub exponential time. Note that in the scheme, the input share size is sub exponential, unless the ETH fails. So note that our result only applies to a specific instantiation of the matching vector family. And why do we care about our one function? It tells us that it is hopeless to obtain similar shortcuts as we did in the regular case, because this trivial function is a special case of all the functions that we considered. And this impossibility result signifies that the hardness comes from the structure of the matching vector instead of the function being evaluated. Also, we should note that by the required formula, we mean this formula here, which loops over capital N entries. And it, we mean this specific input and output mapping has to be carried out. We are ruling out shortcuts for the original protocol. And the service cannot cheat by computing another function. Otherwise, the O1 truth table has a trivial HSS. We prove our hardness by reducing from the fine grain complexity of the inducer graph counting problem, which is parameterized by graph property and a size parameter. The inputs consist of a graph with out nodes, and you want to know the number of inducer graphs with W nodes such that it satisfies the graph property. And you only care about the parity so that there is this parity sign at the beginning. In our setting, we would uh, be interested in this predicate, which test is if a if the number of edges in a graph is congruent to delta modulo n. And as an example, let's look at this eight vertices graph. We want to know how many four induced subgraphs has an even number of edges. And the naive algorithm is to uh, enumerate every four tuple in the graph that would run in roughly out to the k time. And the result from parameterized complexity states that for many non-trivial predicates, this problem cannot be solved in time r to the little of w unless ETH fails. This states that if the ETH is true, then the naive algorithm uh, cannot be improved substantially. For our purpose, we have to refine the analysis of the theorem a bit to show that for a specific predicate, the test if the number of edges in the graph is a multiple of 511. And assuming the ETH, we can prove that this problem is hard for some parameter of function of this order. And this is already enough to imply the hardness for capital instantiation of the matching vector family. However, this uh, makes our result a bit restricted because it only applies to careful instantiation of the matching vector family. But there's actually not much reason to believe that this is not the case to a more general instantiation of the matching vector. Therefore, we made the following conjecture which essentially states that for any reasonable choice of M and delta and W, uh, the problem cannot be solved in time much better than the naive implementation. And it is an open problem whether this, is, this conjecture is true. 
and there are some partial evidence for parameterized complexity supporting this conjecture. But for our purpose, we are mostly interested in the case where m and delta is chosen to be 511 and 0, and w is on the order of square root of r, because this corresponds to the realm of the matching vector family with the best asymptotic complexity. Finally, let's briefly describe how we can modify the matching vector protocols for shortcuts. These are actually not shortcuts of the original schemes because we have to change the protocols themselves, but they may be of independent interest because these methods apply to a broad class of PIRs. First, we observe that there is this tensoring operation implicit in Ritmula PIRs, which composes PIRs with itself d times to create a hypercube structure in the computation. We have to increase the number of servers in such a setting, and we can look at this matching vector protocol as an example. You can see that there is a blow up in the number of servers and the input share size is still sub-exponential. And now we can virtually support all the shortcuts that we had in the removal setting in the same complexity. And it is still exponential and not uh, sub-exponential because uh, we have shown that the metric vector structure is hard to utilize. And what we are utilizing here is the structure pres present in the removal case instead. Secondly, we introduce the technique of parallel compositions of PIR. This technique enables us to evaluate special form of DNF formulas. The crucial observation here is that each conjunctive term is a DNF formula corresponding to a point function in a restricted domain. And these point functions can be super fast to evaluate in a PIR scheme. Therefore, the client can send out multiple uh, PIR queries corresponding to different restricted domains, and the function can be quickly evaluated if there are not too many restricted domains. This is already powerful enough to express segments, but not decision trees. We will also need to incorporate randomness and sacrifice the perfect correctness in the scheme, but we can see that the computation now is really a sub exponential complexity. To summarize, we study the notion of shortcuts in PRR and we show that they are possible in the regular setting for several useful function families. These results are clean and all follow from a single shortcut for rectangles. But when we move to harder function or more complicated schemes, the fine-grained complexity of counting comes into play. The hardness arise for different reasons, but they can both be based on the SCTH or the ETH. We also propose tensoring and parallel composition in order to obtain shortcut. For more concrete complexity comparisons and extensions, please refer to the paper. Thank you for joining our presentation.